know you had some comments about nostalgia bait recently and like um it's really strange for people like you and me to think that there's people out there looking at harry potter potter as pure happy-go-lucky nostalgia you know like it's yeah. It's not that anymore. It's really hard for it to be that when you are any part of the Alphabet Mafia and have seen any tweet that JK Rowling has said over the past like decade. Um, I looked at her Twitter to f try to find a screen cap of that one tweet where she was being like, I'm never gonna forgive Emma Watson and Daniel Radcliffe. And just like scroll, I never found it because I got so mad that I had to stop. But <laughs> scrolling through her Twitter, it's literally her either screenshotting Harry Potter, like former Harry Potter fans that are sad about how horrible a person she is and making fun of them, or her just responding to people on Twitter who are former Harry Potter fans that are sad and her just making fun of them. And I was like, I can't believe that this person put out these books and now all you do online is make fun of kids that are sad that you ended up being a fascist like this is just so weird that we've ended up in this place but I know <laughs> I made this video about Harry Potter like I don't even know when I made it it was probably like a month and a half ago and it still keeps getting views and it keeps getting comments on it still like every day it's so funny to me how it like keeps going because this is obviously something that people care a lot about but like the thing I said in that video is that Harry Potter fans, m the ones that are still fans of the world and are still willing to give JK Rowling money, they, they're they not even fans of something that exists. Like Harry Potter, when, when those books were first coming out, people thought that it was like a story that's actually Percy Jackson. People thought like Percy Jackson is a story of like calling out how the entire world is responsible for the things that have happened, that it's not just one person's fault because all these different things happen for a long time and there's no like quick fix. You can do little things along the way to try to change things positively and you can see those change happen, but things aren't gonna change magically overnight and it's not that simple of a, like a solve. You know, Percy can't actually solve everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's never expected to and and it's crazy to think that he could where harry potter is not actually that story it's a story of he, it's a white liberal story of like oh this uh voldemort was just the only problem and it's it's he's the reason why literally the entire governmental situation just like collapsed on itself because he manipulated all of them all at the same time and he's the reason why all those people became like um dementors and stuff and so if he's not there it's like Literally, you could like change the word like Voldemort and put in the word Trump and it would be the same discussion that people have right now of like, oh, if Biden stays president, then magically everything is going to be better. It's like, actually, no, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not. And so it's that's sort of a story. That's what J.K. Rowling was writing. And so if you're still most of the fans of Harry Potter now to this day, they try to make that story that they have in their minds, like the nostalgia of what they believe, what they thought that story was when they were kids, like be what's actually true when it's absolutely not. And it's so weird to see them spend all of this time and effort and money, like literally arguing with like half of the world at this point about how they can justify giving JK Rowling money when you can literally see her using it to kill trans people. And that's not like, and that's not even like a youth like um an exaggeration or whatever or hyperbole she's literally giving money to kill trans people and so it's like and she outwardly just mocks people on twitter saying that she uses the money she gets from harry po she literally only puts out things involved in harry potter to get more money to use it to kill trans people and she's basically said that many times before and so if you can somehow still like you have to do so much mental gymnastics in order to try to convince yourself and most of it is coming from this like remembering this feeling you had when you originally read the books and it's like that feeling can never be like duplicated like people even do that with percy jackson like there are people out there who still think that the tv show isn't good because it doesn't have a harry like, not harry because it doesn't have a percy voiceover like in the movie because it doesn't have these tiny little details in certain scenes and it's like if you can watch that tv i genuinely if you can watch that tv show 
and feel like it's not good, then your nostalgia is clouding your view so much that you can't even see a good thing when it's slapping you in the face. Like nostalgia is one of those, it sounds really weird um, if you've never thought of it before, but it's, nostalgia is like a white supremacy thing. Like a lot of um, the, a, the way, the kind of entry point for a lot of kind of fascisty people to get people to like think about that are those like, hey, remember when sort of videos? Remember in the 90s when we all drank Surge for some reason and it was 85 cents? And like, remember like our, this like video or remember how it used to be. Like, it's very easy when you think about it that way to imagine how people being like, hey, remember in the good old days? And then knowing that that like pushes somebody eventually into belie in believing like fascist ideas of the good old days were better because all of the non-white people didn't have a voice. <laughs> yeah. and it's like that sort of thing. And so it's really weird to see people who love Harry Potter, who don't even know what they love about it anymore because it doesn't exist, stay focused and give a literal fascist money on a regular basis because of the nostalgia that they are like stuck in a prison with. It's like this weird, it's like a weird um, like, alt-right like pipeline of itself is like still liking harry potter and it feels really weird to say that but that's what it's turned into because of who like if you can look at these stories and especially see the things inherent in the like a literal plot line about how slaves are happy to be slaves <laughs> literally like owns a slave that in the books you're told you should hate him because he's mad about the fact that he's a fucking slave and that he's basically an indentured servant that is stuck just helping anyone that's related to Sirius Black for the rest of his fucking existence. And, and it's mean to the one person who wants to free him, Hermione. <laughs> Like, what is going on? And it, like, that stuff is just, like, it shows how dangerous that sort of nostalgia can be of, like, if you get so attached to, like, a feeling that something gave you where you, it, it becomes, like, almost like this weird parasocial thing you have going on with it where you don't, where you can't see it clearly anymore. You can do, like, really horrible things to people and not even realize what you're doing because why why have harry potter fans been leaving me comments for a month and a half being like you're a mean bitch because you don't like this book series that most of the world doesn't like anymore yeah. <laughs> like why do they feel like they have to insult me and it because i just made a made a 60 second video being like you guys like something that doesn't even exist in reality <laughs> very possible to still interact with the fandom even the official fandom and not you know put excess money in jk rowling's pocket it might sound mean to them but you cannot buy officially like licensed things go to any of the movies watch and play any of the video games go to the parks or any of that stuff if you don't want people to then question your morals afterwards, like that's an entire co thing that should be happening. Like if, especially after this year where JK Rowling said, like literally said that she gave like $80,000 to a horrific anti-trans organization based on like the money she gets from Harry Potter, like there's direct evidence for it. And so people should be questioning you about that because you can go to Universal Studios and not go to Harry Potter and or you can go to other parks this is like my autism thing happening where once I know that something is really bad I like can't separate it from it anymore yeah. and so like I remember whenever JK Rowling came out with that horrible like magic in America thing where she acted like the entirety of the United States could only go to like one magical school on the East Coast. But the most horrible thing about that was that she literally just like, was when she said wizards knew that there was, that slavery was going on. They just didn't care and didn't do anything about it. And she just co-opted Native American, like indigenous, like very like important practices to them. And just copied them into her own world. Like when that happened, I was like, that is so, that was a long time ago, but I still was like that. I can't do this anymore. I that and was like pretty soon after the last book came out, it was like within a couple years, right? Yeah, it was. And I just, I reached that point where 
like I would see Harry Potter merch like at the stores like because I love like I love geek like merch and stuff and so I would they're always still at the stores even to now and but I would see it then and it's like the switch just went off in my head where even though I looked at it and I remembered what I loved about it at one point I had absolutely no drive whatsoever to ever buy it ever again and looking at it actually made me really sad and like looking at the books at, at like bookstores made me depressed and like even though I went to Universal Studios back in 2010 and went to Harry Potter land before most of it all the other parts were built and I remember going there and enjoying what I saw and be and having fun on the rides I went on I also can't imagine going back and it was like not even hard for, it wasn't hard for me to do that because my autism brain just like switched and whenever I looked at Harry Potter stuff all I could see is like JK Rowling killing people and doing things that were actively harming people and I just couldn't separate it anymore from my head and <laughs> I don't know how people who aren't autistic think about stuff like that, but at least for us, that's kind of what can happen is like, if our empathy is like hit to a certain point, then it's like, there's no changing my mind. There's no going back. And I can't justify this anymore, no matter how hard I try. And so I think that sometimes when people get questions like that, of like, how can you, how can you buy Harry Potter official stuff still? We, we genuinely don't understand why because that's just how it works for us is like once we go over a certain point i can't come back anymore no matter how much i want to do it <laughs>